Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're here today. I'm sorry about yesterday. You know, some things happen that are outside of a timeline that I can really affect. Um, and I'm still working out. Uh, when I'm in Fort Wayne, what we're going to do for Live for Five, um, I have Vicarage Supervisor, or SMP, Specific Ministry Pastor, Vicarage Supervisor Training in Fort Wayne, Indiana from the 16th of September through the 23rd. So it's a Saturday to Saturday. And uh, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to navigate that during the week um, to bring Live for Five to you. Uh, I don't have the schedule yet. When I have it, I'll start formulating how and if I'll be able to. Um, it's easy enough to bring a stand and have and have the phone and the camera and all these amazing technology to make this happen. So that wouldn't be the problem. It'd be figuring out the timeline. So as soon as I figure that out, we'll make sure we have it. Um, good morning, Terry and Diana. Let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Pulling out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from Romans chapter 15, verse 5. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. This is a, an interesting text to start slowing things down at the end of Romans. In, involved in all that Paul has said from the beginning of chapter 14 through this text, he is going at the unity in the church. We talk about unity, our society talks about unity, and so let's remove all that packaging with how it's been used in other places to just deal with maybe our just our congregation, because this was written to one congregation. We have the strong in faith, the weak in faith. We have the abled and the unabled, and everyone in between, and we are one in this one holy church by virtue of this justifying faith that we have that makes us all part of this one body of Christ. This oneness together is a simple fact. A simple fact that Christ is driving to and Paul is just explaining it all the more. So Paul's concern is the oneness in apprehending the teachings and the instructions of Scripture. That, that we remain one in the process of being taught and being instructed in Scripture. Now, this is a very important part of this. All believers are to be fully clear on what this instruction is as they're able now, there's this fancy Greek word, you might have heard it, called adiaphora, which is, is things that are neither commanded and they're not forbidden in Scripture. And so then it's not a theological matter um, per se, and, and you're just making a decision. When you have unity on the big stuff, the adiaphora stuff doesn't become as much of a problem. If you're unified in Christ, if you're unified in teaching, if you know where your, your faith comes from, if you know the content of your faith comes from, then when those other topics that don't have as much pressing weight come up, they don't take hold of us. Nor will any mistaking teachings or convictions divide us because we all know where we go. To get the norming content of our belief. This was Christ's concern in the high priestly prayer from uh, John chapter 17. So let, let me read that to you. Sanctify them in the truth. 
Thy word is truth. Your word is truth. This oneness in the world is to, or oneness in the word is to impress the world. So our mind is to be normed by Christ Jesus, by his word. And this norm is not the, the character of Jesus, which makes him an example in another way. That's another teaching. Christ Jesus is our norm as Christ Jesus. As all that he was, as all that he is in his office, in his person. And that is as all that he and his work and his word comprise. Now, all of that is why it is important to be unified at the communion rail. It's so weighty that you have people strong in faith that that don't have the concerns when you have someone that uh, claims that they confess that Christ's body and blood is there, but 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 really doesn't. The the strong in faith understands that. That person has, has lied to God or or doesn't believe that, and that's is up up to them. The weak in faith struggle with that distinction. And so the strong protect the weak. Now there's there's a whole other conversation about the tyranny of the weak. And you can have the tyranny of the strong as well. But when it comes to our unity our unity and harmony as laid out here in Romans 15.5 comes down to the norm and being unified in our teachings. This is, this is why communion matters. And, and the other myriad of things is just that communion is kind of one of the more frequently prominent ones that comes up. Let, let's, let's hear this text again. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus as normed by Christ Jesus. May God grant us this harmony. May he grant us this unity in the church. And and. Therefore, be able to take it to the world as they're impressed by our, our harmony and unity in this way. This, this is almost a prayer unto itself. Let us pray. God of endurance and encouragement, give us unity. Give us harmony in the church with one another as we see it normed by the teachings of your Son in your word handed to us. What an amazing, wonderful gift. Give us unity to combat all the ills of this world and bring more to the knowledge of the joy of your salvation. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for more time in God's Word. Have a blessed day in Christ.